Before a system can authorize or restrict anything, it first needs to know the identity of the requester. That's what authentication does. It verifies that the person or system trying to access your app is legit. And in this video, you'll learn how modern applications handle authentication, from basic to bearer tokens to OAuth 2 authentication and GVT tokens, as well as access and refresh tokens, and also single sign-on and identity protocols. Before learning the different types, let's first understand what is authentication. Authentication basically answers who the user is and if they are allowed to access your system. So whenever a login request is sent, either by the user or another service, this is where we confirm the identity of the user and either provide them access, so approve their request or reject it with unauthorized request. This is basically the first step before authorization begins, which is the topic of the next lesson. So before you access any data or perform any actions on this service, the system needs to know who you are and this is where the authentication is used. The first and simplest type of authentication is basic authentication. This is where you use username and password in combination and you send a login request which contains the base64 encoded version of username and password. This is a very simple way of encoding data and it's easily reversible. And because it's easily reversible, it's now considered insecure unless it's wrapped within HTTPS. But even with that, it is now very rarely used outside of the internal tools in the company. Next, we have bearer tokens, which are more secure compared to basic authentication. Here you send the access token with each request instead of the username and password encoding, so whenever the client needs to access resources, they send this token within the request and then your API verifies or rejects the token and if it verifies, then you send the successful response with the data that they requested. Pair tokens are the standard approach nowadays, especially in API design, because it is fast and stateless, which makes it easy to scale those APIs. The next type is OAuth 2 authentication in combination with GVT tokens. So OAuth 2 is a protocol which is the second version of OAuth. It lets users log in through a trusted provider like Google or GitHub. So user sends a request to access your resources. And if you allow them to authenticate with Google, basically Google sends your app a GVT token which contains the information of this user. This is how that payload will look like. Usually they send you the user ID or the email, the username and more stuff and also the expiration date for these GVT tokens. This is a signed object which then you pass from your app to the API and then your API will authenticate based on this information. GVTs are also stateless, similar to bearer tokens, which means that you don't need to store sessions between the requests and each request can be executed separately. And if you want to see how these authentication flows are implemented in real-world projects and not just in theory, then you can check out my mentorship program, which will be the first link in the description. Next, we also have access and refresh types of tokens. So modern systems use short-lived access tokens, which expire faster and also long-lived refresh tokens, which usually expire later than the access tokens. Access tokens are used for API calls, so whenever you want to get some data from the API, you send this access token to access the data. And refresh tokens, on the other hand, are used to renew the access tokens. So whenever the access token expires, this is where you will use the refresh token to get a new one, a new access token, behind the scenes. So this way users won't be logged out, they will stay logged in and also your system will stay secure because you are frequently renewing this access token. And one note here is that you should typically keep the refresh tokens in the server side for security reasons. And lastly we have SSO which stands for single sign-on and identity protocols that are used with it. Single sign-on lets users to have one login, so login once and access multiple services. For example, when you log into Google, you can access both Gmail, Drive and also Calendar and all of their other services. And behind the scenes, this SSO uses either SAML protocol or OAuth2 protocol. 
OAuth 2 is used more often nowadays for the modern applications to log in with Google or with GitHub or any other service provider. It is a modern and JSON based. And on the other hand, SAML protocol uses XML based approach. But still SAML is very popular in the legacy systems and in companies that use things like Salesforce or internal dashboards. So these are identity protocols, which means that they will define how apps securely exchange the user login information between each other. But authentication is just the first step before users can access your service. So this tells you who the user is and if they are allowed to access your service. That is when they send a login request and you confirm or deny their identity. But after that, you also have the authorization step which tells you what resources exactly this user can access to. Basically, it tells you what they can do, what the user can do in your system, which tells you what resources exactly this user can access to. Basically, it tells you what they can do, what the user can do in your system. And that is what we will cover next in the next video.